Well, hello, boys and girls. When they feel like it o'clock, you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. And I should start just calling this our NHL Pearls of Wisdom. Because we're, all, we're having a bunch, we're having uh, collaborations here all the time, and I freaking love it. We got Delhi here, one of the finest writers in the land for the Anaheim, for, for Anaheim primarily, but knows the league extremely well. We have so much fun with him, it's great. And Joseph Boric as well as you have become quite familiar with, because Joseph and I do this quite a bit, and delhi has been doing it when he can as well. So we got all three of us today, and we are looking at the finest day in the land, right? The play, the play, play in round starting. Uh, also, some are they playing playoff ones as well, or is it all play, play in rounds? No, I think it's all play in rounds. Um, starting on the first, wow, what an exciting time to be able to uh, um, get back to hockey again. How are you guys excited? And let me know a little bit about what you've been doing lately and all of that. Uh, Deli, what's what's going on with you, bud? Uh, no, actually, more and more so. I'm, I'm excited for hockey to start. Uh, like you said, the, play, uh, the uh, playing round starts Sunday and the, the actual series start tomorrow. So uh, going right, to be watching... Sure. Going to be watching a lot of hockey. Um, start in my uh, my podcast, uh, my co-hosting podcast duties with Totally Offsides tomorrow as well. So uh, and still writing for the hockey writers, uh, just with news and notes and and whatever I can about the Ducks as they're uh, as they're continuing their off season. But doing well, thanks. Uh, I appreciate the uh, the time. And Joe. Yeah, I'm very excited for hockey to come back. Obviously, tomorrow we have the round robin starts Sunday, like Delhi said, and we have the others starting tomorrow, which is more, I think, what's going to get the TV ratings, obviously. So, yeah. and it counts as a playoff series, which is interesting. So, all these teams that had playoff droughts now don't because they decided to count the play in technically as a playoff series. That's why I call so, it the play-in round. Yeah. It's not so, the playoffs round. But that's, yeah, so it's kind of weird to describe it. But like uh, Pirlo's been on our True Philadelphian Sportscast, that's where you can find me, and then Flyers Nitty Gritty, where I write for the Flyers with Jamie, and then Pub Sports Radio for baseball coverage as well, on top of hockey, yeah. if baseball continues. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So there's, there's a big question there. Yeah. Um, so, yes, we start off with a 10 o'clock in the morning start which is going to be interesting in itself. Uh, I find those early morning or early starts can sometimes be kind of voodoo. We're looking at the Rangers and Hurricanes. Uh, we kind of know who your picks are for who's going to win the series, but what about what advantage do you think either team might have? And we'll start off with Joe on this one. Um, playing in the morning and the first real game that they're playing after a long layoff. Do you see either team having an advantage in this situation, Joe? Um, well, if you're talking about playing in the morning, uh, both of these teams kind of are high-energy teams. They're not really those teams. like They win because of skill. Obviously, Carolina is more the team that wins because of their energy and everybody just backing each other. But we have to remember, I saw the stat just say, Justin Williams had six goals in like the final five or six games of the season. So, obviously, like I said, that's why I don't think they're going to get swept because Justin Williams ain't no chance in hell letting the Hurricanes get swept. And Weimer, if he steps up one game, will do well. But I think the Rangers have the advantage because they're fully healthy. The heart and soul of their team is Kreider, who went down. He's the guy that's always been. That's why they overpaid him, in my opinion, a little bit. But it's because of the locker room. You overpay guys sometimes for what they are in the locker room as well as on the ice. And Kreider, like I said, is their like heart and soul of their team. You have him back with Zabenejad, who's been doing great. Strom's had his best season with Quinn. Obviously, Panarin's into the Hart Trophy candidacy. He's a guy that can take over a series more than anybody on Carolina yet, unless if Sveshnikov really just goes off at 20 years old. That's the only chance Carolina really has at winning the series. So I would say the Rangers have an advantage in game one because Shesterkin will set the tempo because I think they will choose him to start. He got named the starter before the season ended. So I haven't seen, even though Hanks played well, I haven't seen him play unwell to get that tag moved. So I would say he's going to set the tempo. They'll win game one. They'll win the series. But there's no chance they're going to sweep them because Justin Williams and, and Slavin and others will not let that happen on Carolina. How about you, Delhi? 
I, I think I would agree with you, Joe. Um, I, I'm really curious to see how the uh, how the layoff affects the Rangers specifically, because to me, uh, I think it's going to benefit, especially their young players like Capo Caco and, and Kravtsov and, and the young guys, because effectively this is like their sophomore season. They they uh, I mean, I know it's the playoffs, but they they really had some time to digest their rookie season in the NHL. I know uh, I'm not I don't remember if Kravtsov played a lot or if he was in Russia, but you kind of have some time to to reevaluate how you played, especially if you're Kako. You have some time. Four months is enough time to put on some weight and some muscle. You might be doing it in your home gym, but uh, I wonder if there if there's going to be a benefit to the Rangers in that. I think Carolina, top to bottom, is a little deeper, especially their defensive core and up, up top with Teravine and Shveshnikov and Aho. Uh, but I really think this is probably going to be one of the better series in the uh, in the whole opening round, just because I think the teams are more closely matched than uh, than people think. I, I know Carolina with the higher seed, but um, I, I I think I might have to go with the Rangers in a in a maybe a full five game series in this one. I'm I'm excited. Yeah, I originally picked the uh, Canes in this before I knew Dougie Hamilton was out. Uh, I remember when we did our video a couple weeks ago, Pirlo, I picked them in the video when you hopped on my channel. Um, but Dougie Hamilton being out is a playoff caliber defenseman, obviously quarterbacking your power play with, then now you have Slavin as the guy that's actually the anchor. That's a huge detriment. I also thought Brett Pesce had a chance to come back from shoulder surgery. I think that video was like three weeks ago, and obviously that didn't happen. So those two things... They have more offensively inclined guys back there than defensively inclined. The Rangers have a mix. Adam Fox, stats wise, could probably finish top ten in the Norris as a rookie if you really if people really looked at it in the voting. So that I think would give the Rangers the head up too. They have a little bit of a mixed defense compared to a bunch of offensively inclined, more offensive people and Jacob Slavin. So he's great. Brought up, both brought up very good, extremely good points. Uh, Williams, for instance. This is a guy that did scored at a very high rate in the second half, coming in cold without a training camp, right? So that's huge for Carolina. They've got a guy there that has shown that he can play coming out cold right there, right? So that that's a big X factor there. I also thought that you brought up an extremely good point with Capo Caco. Uh, uh, from what I understand, he came in looking very, very good. He's physically matured super fast. That guy he looked good working, in the game. He was working his ass off, and I think that's a huge X factor for that series. So you're both taking the Rangers game one, though? Yeah, I think so. I will. Yeah. Okay, excellent. Okay, Coppa looked move. great in the game as well, by the way. Yeah, he looked yeah, a he lot did. more um, taken over on the ice a little bit. He had one transition. He skated down, did like that little toe drag move and put on a good shot. Uh, the, yeah. They just had a nice stop. So I liked how he looked in the game. He's going to be a beast. There's no doubt about that. He's going to be amazing. Uh, sick that the Rangers got him, too. Just sick. <laughs> <laughs> they, they can pick up college kids whenever they – I go on about that sometimes. <laughs> uh, yeah. Let's go with uh, the Blackhawks and Oilers. First game, uh, also an afternoon game. I um, What do you – let's go the opposite side. Let's uh, – who did I start with last time? Let's go with Delhi no, this time. Okay. And uh, – <laughs> What are you what are you looking at for this game in an afternoon game, Delhi? This one is this one is tough for me. I, I uh, uh, to be honest, um, Chicago kind of snuck under my radar this year, and I know they were trying to bounce back. And we were talking before the call uh, about Colleton and and his coaching abilities. Um, I. I think this all comes down to Corey Crawford. Uh, I read I read a similar uh, take in the Athletic as well. Crawford comes back relatively recently from injury. He gets lit up lit up in his first practice, but he, he played well in that in that preseason game like you guys mentioned. So uh, I think if if Crawford plays well, uh, I think with Kane and Taves' experience on on the on the uh, Blackhawks, I think they've uh, I think they've got a chance. But if Crawford gets lit up, uh, it's it's Edmonton all the way. And and I want to say from that from that most recent exhibition game that game one probably is going to be is going to be a low score. But uh, I, I'm going to have to go with Edmonton in game one and the series just because they they got younger, more talented. They've got the one two punch with Gagne or well, <laughs> sorry with McDavid and. Uh, Dreisaitl, uh, they've got uh, they've got some uh, some good 
growing depth as well. Not, I mean, they're not a deep team, but I just think Chicago with the question mark and goal, uh, I think they're going to have a little bit more of a, of a difficult time. Although I, I like Caves and Tay, or Taves and Kane, but I'm going to go with Edmonton. Okay. Joseph, what are we doing for that game? Uh, those are good points for sure. Yeah. No, that was a perfect explanation because I was pretty much as a guy that loves goalies going to say it comes all down to Crawford. Obviously, Subban looked very good in the exhibition, but I don't know. Um, you don't want to throw him into a playoff caliber game right now. He hasn't had a lot of continuous experience in the NHL where he's played even back-to-back games a lot yet. So, But um, it's good to see he's looked good. Maybe he can be their backup. Um, when they have signed, go out and sign somebody else. So it's good for him. But for them, the Chicago's thing, the problem hasn't been Kane and Taze have continued to be great. Taze is like aging like a fine wine. <laughs> and then uh, Kane is kind of the same thing, but Kane is probably just going to be great until he's like 40, just like some of those players that just never stink. Uh, never like lesser. Guy, I'll do that yeah. Um, but um, their problem has been their, obviously, their Nylander, Alex, Alex Nylander. Um, hasn't been that great, and they hoped he would be a more dynamic player for them. He had 26 points in 65 games. It's not that that's terrible, but for a player that you thought you were getting from him, that's not good. You thought you were getting more of a top six player that was more dynamic for your team. If he can step up, he looked pretty solid in their game as well. So if guys like that down the lineup can step up, because their issue was depth, if they can show some of that depth, then they have on paper guys that would present more depth down the line than Edmonton, but they also never showed up this year. So they would have to show up to present that more depth, where Edmonton has guys that on paper don't look as sweet name-wise as some of the guys on Chicago, but they actually showed up a little bit better than Chicago's guys. So that's why I would still pick Edmonton in game one. And probably pick Edmonton in the series because guys like, and then Yamamoto came in and was a beast amongst men as soon as he came in. So that makes a big factor with Edmonton as well. You got now three rather than just two, where Chicago, you still just have two offensive people you really look at. And then Debrinkit, but even they even said Debrinkit um, needs to. I remember watching a coverage thing from Chicago that I had when I had the NHL thing up, and they said he needs to like become a beast in the playoffs to be that like three-headed monster he can't just be the good player he's been the whole season where he's been really good but he needs to like take over with Kane and Taze yeah good points um yeah I think Chicago's got a lot of proof here for sure no doubt about that uh I don't know why you would think the Oilers do as well but they just had such a good second half of the regular season yeah they went off it seems like Chicago has a lot more question marks uh, excellent. Koskinen point. looked amazing, by the way. Yeah, he Koskinen. looked very good in the exhibition. Koskinen looked good at the end of the season. Really, really started putting it together at the end of the season. Uh, coach Tippett is a goalie whisperer. It seems he does very well with goaltenders. So, uh, great coaches generally are that way. Um, so let's go to our next one. Another afternoon game. It's just gonna be so fun. Morning to night hockey. Uh, Panthers versus Islanders. First game, what are you guys looking at there? I'll start a joke. Yeah, well, we were talking about after our one podcast. Um, it turns out the Panthers' defense stunk in that game, so only about two of those goals were probably on Bob, I would say. Um, so I wouldn't say Bob looked regular season Bob in that game. It was more Matheson looked regular season Matheson and the guys that continued to struggle on defense continued to struggle on defense for Florida. So it was more he was just hung out to dry is the best way to kind of put it in that exhibition game. Like they just played absolutely horrendous on defense. Um, So they obviously, the only chance they have of winning is Keith Yendel, the veteran, stepping up. And then you obviously have Aaron Ekblad. So you need to have all those guys really step up on your back end and also try to propel Matheson to have a solid playoffs because he's had back-to-back off seasons after getting paid. Um, so that's not pretty for them. And so they need guys to really step up. I don't see it happening because Bob struggled. Their defense struggled. Obviously, you need defense and goaltending to win games in the playoffs. So I see this series pretty – I could see them winning 
I mean, somehow I could see this just being one of those inexplicable series where Florida wins two games, but I would still see the Islanders winning the series because it's not like the Islanders, like I said to you in the other podcast, look too pretty uh, ending the season. They look solid against the Rangers, but they still – they look solid, but they still – need to play great like they played earlier in the season, not like they if they start playing like they played in the back half, then, yeah, that's going to become a series that they're probably going to win three to two. So you Instead say, of, uh, but you're saying you figure Islanders are going to yeah, win the first game? They would win the first game probably. I think they would set the trend because, like I said, the defense looks so off for Florida. If Florida wins, it would be more because the Islanders show some of their old ways from the end of the season, I think, after the first game they would have a struggle game and then they would have to maybe bounce back after the second game or whenever they have that one off game, you'd have to see how they bounce back since they didn't show much bounce back in the end of the season, in the last 10 games of the season before the pause. So. All right, Deli, what do you got out of this first game here? Uh, it's funny. I have, this is my bias is going to color this, uh, this response because I more than any team in the league, except maybe the coyotes, have such a dislike for the Florida Panthers and that <laughs> franchise that I just can't see them. I can't see them winning the series. Uh, obviously, if Sergey Bobrovsky has a good has a good start to the season, uh, or sorry, has a good has a good playoff, uh, then that can change. But Bobrovsky, I mean, didn't have a good season this year. Uh, uncharacteristically uh, bad goals against and uh, and and save percentage than he normally has is like we said his career uh save percentage is 917 career goals against 2.5 and this season it was at a 3.23 and 900 save percentage so uh not good by Bobrovsky's standards um but we talk about the the whole layoff like we did with the Rangers is the layoff going to help reset some minds like it might for the Rangers and other teams so Hey, if Bobrovsky can can get him back into the right mindset, and and maybe he can steal game one, um, but overall, Panthers defense fourth worst in the league in in goals against per game. Like they, they I'm, I, it's this is kind of a non sequitur, but uh, Mark Pysik, their defenseman that they moved to forward, ended up being a, like a relatively good third line forward in the league, <laughs> uh, which I mean is pretty interesting considering their defense stinks so bad. So. Uh, they're just a weird team. The Islanders, I just think, generally are more consistent. Uh, so, I mean, the series I'm going to go with the Islanders, game one, uh, it's a hard one. Uh, I think I think probably Islanders as well. I don't have very much faith that Bobrovsky is going to be in this uh, – in this weird kind of playoff format. Uh, they talked about his kind of lack of concentration with the, with the Blue Jackets last year. And I don't know. I, 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 maybe it's my bias talking, but I think it's Islanders in game one and Islanders in the series. Yeah, Vorlamov also looked very good. So that, that helps in the goaltending matchup when he looked great in camp and then looked great in the exhibition game. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, there was something... I was going to say about the Islanders in Florida there, but I forgot now. I don't know why. <laughs> but anyways, uh, yeah, so you're both taking the Islanders. That's very interesting. Um, it's amazing. Like, people that I talk to, like you guys, um, uh, it seems to me that people on television, are a lot of people are picking the Panthers. Um, uh, I, I have a tendency to wonder if maybe the league kind of helps them maybe make that decision to try to give – you know what I mean? Know what I'm yeah. saying? Know what I'm saying? Some buzz. Because they really do need, if that organization is on the, on the their last legs, I, I think. So if they're going to save that franchise, they probably need as much positive energy as possible. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and Arizona as well, as you uh, brought up. But uh, So we'll go to our next one. Now we're talking about an evening game. Uh, Penguins versus the Canadians, 6 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> we're chuckling already before we get started we starting with joe this time mm -hmm. all right joe. uh no no no, no, no. i think um, okay yeah i think it's deli yeah yeah uh, is it deli? okay deli. yeah it's it's we're going back and forth i like this rapid fire uh i'm going with <laughs> penguins in game one penguins in the series uh like we were talking about with the last with the last series the obviously the x factor is goaltending another goaltender that uh had an uncharacteristically poor season in carry price um but i just think crosby malkin those two guys are going to be ready i think they're they're 
upset after last season. I think the break probably helped them. Like we talked about Crosby, maybe recover from an injury a little more. Uh, it's, I think it's going to be this first game is going to be a, a, a firing squad, so to speak, uh, where the Pe- and Gensel obviously coming back where the penguins are just going to be unleashing absolute, uh, hell on Carey price and the Canadians. I think they don't want this to become a series. I don't think they, I don't think they want the Canadians to steal game one. So I expect a fast start from Pittsburgh, uh, and then maybe a fast finish in the next two games. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm expecting big things out of Pittsburgh. Joe, are you on the same wavelength there? Or do you think Montreal might scoop one out one in the first game or something like that for some reason? Um, well, that would seem like a thing Pittsburgh would allow to happen in game one and then just <laughs> win the series. Like That just seems like a Pittsburgh thing to do, just allow Carey Price to swipe one from them and then be like, okay, don't worry, boys. We'll just win all next three un- unhandily. Like, we'll win like by three goals at least each game. Um, but, no, I think the Canadians have a chance because he looked good and they just look terrible. So if like their defense actually can look good for one game to win one game to at least not get swept because they have carry price, but that's the only chance they have. I don't think that'll be the first game though, because they look terrible. Like I said, in the exhibition, they didn't look good in front of price price looks solid, but they hunting him out to dry. So I don't think they'll win a first game. They might find a way to sneak in there because also if Pittsburgh gets up 2-0, say, sometimes teams become complacent when they think they're about to easily win a series. And then that game that they think they're easily going to win the series is the game that the other team can grab sometime. So that could be the potentially the game that Canadians will grab, maybe game three, because I think Pittsburgh will go up 2-0. And then the Pittsburgh will just blow them out the next game probably and win the series. So they're going to win the series. I think it'll be because of Yare, though, more than Murray. Because he's been their guy this year. He also was named their starter eventually. So I haven't seen much to decide, let's go back to Matt Murray. Unless if you're, the only thing would be experience. Like it would be in uh, New York. The only thing would be experience. So, uh, yeah, you bring up a really good point. Pittsburgh does have a uh, pension for starting off slow in, in, in Malkin, especially. Uh, there has been a pension to start off slow, not just in playoff series, but in regular season. It seems to be a common theme with them. They've had times where they had bad first halves and then just come back and destroyed everybody, right? So that's a really good point. Uh, so the final game we have is a late game, and this is a really interesting game to me. Um, I you can watch my series picks. I have my series series picks, and I'll probably post them in the comment section. Deli and I did it. Boric and I did it. But the game tomorrow uh, with uh, the Jets and the Flames, and I'm starting off with uh, Joe here. This one seems like the most interesting one of the night to me. Maybe not to you. What do you think? This is probably going to be potentially one of the closest series because obviously the Jets don't play the sweetest of games to not frustrate you sometimes if you're a Jets fan while watching a game when it comes to watching them defensively. But offensively, they have great names. They have arguably the best or second best goalie in the league. So um, it's either him or Tuke, I would say, when people pick from it now. And then Vazzy's somewhere right there you might be tied with hellbuck so but um i would say game one i honestly think calgary might grab because they look pretty solid um and riddich looked solid so if he's able to play good but i do still think the series because i feel like winnipeg is a stronger deeper team if they can just play well the problem is if their defense can step up um I think they could win the series. I don't think Winnipeg um, is going to be able to advance significantly past that if they find a way to win the series. This, to me, though, is the hardest series to pick because I think this is the closest um, series out there because Calgary added a playoff-type defenseman in Derek Forbert. And then when you look at Winnipeg, they uh, have a playoff-type. Like, they have a couple guys that you would consider more playoff-esque defensemen like well Niku played pretty good they have Kulikov played great in the exhibition so if you can get that I don't I don't expect that from them in the playoffs but if you can get that that would be beautiful 
And then Nathan Belay, who obviously is a guy that you that's a more of a guy that's probably better for the playoffs than regular season because he will he's he's not afraid to hold you up against the boards and take the body a little bit. He's a little bit of a bigger guy. So if those guys play well, and obviously if if not Vazzy, if Hellbuck plays like a Vezina guy like he did all season, I don't see why he won't. I think they have a chance. I kind of changed my pick on that because I looked into it more. But this is the closest series because David Riddich isn't a joke. He just had a little bit of an off season and still won 24 games. So, uh, and Tam Talbot stepped up. So, uh, we need to see what happens there. That's going to be a three to two series, no doubt in my mind. I will lean. I will lean the Jets right now because of Helba. Dally. Yeah, that's a tough one. I agree. Another tough one to come out with. Uh, like we talked about Ca- uh, Carolina and New York in the East. I think this is going to be the best the best series in the West. Uh, both teams are physical. Jets are a little more, a little bigger and a little more physical. Calgary, I, I want to see how Kachuk plays and uh, if he stirs it up. I think this is going to be one of the knock, knock them down, drag them out series that they have in the, in the first round. Uh both teams played well at the end, heading into the end of the season. I think Winnipeg won, what, four in a row. But like we said, that, that pretty much gets squelched by the layoff. Um, Hellebuck, obviously, is the advantage in goal for, for the Jets. I think the Jets win game one. Uh, they look good in their final exhibition game. I think they've got uh, underrated offensive weapons um, between Ehlers and Line A and, and uh there's, I always forget that one guy's name. Connor <laughs> Shifley. Yeah, yeah Connor and Shifley. Sorry, both those guys. Connor and Shifley. I think they they kind of fly under the radar in the NHL. They're just they're just good, skilled offensive players. And the obviously Calgary has Gaudreau, but uh, I think I think Winnipeg's a little more a little deeper offensively. They've got a better goaltender, so I think they win Game One. But uh, I'm not sure they win the series. I think Calgary. Uh, I think they're going to bounce back. I like. I just like what they have in in Matthew Kachuk. I think he's he's going to be able to stir it up, generate some time for uh, for Calgary. And uh, I think I think Calgary ends up winning in five. I just this is one of those that I don't necessarily <laughs> uh, statistically and, and head to head analyze. I just have like a feeling yeah. that Calgary that Calgary might take it in overtime. Uh, or no, sorry, <laughs> in, in game five, who knows, maybe an overtime. Could be we'll an see, overtime, but, yeah. Yeah, it's, it, this one's going to be interesting, but I, I'm excited to watch it as well. I actually hope that happens. That would be the most exciting if somebody wins an overtime in game five in that series. But I, I had a Calgary at first, actually, because I liked the more overall team. But then when I said I thought it would get to game five, I kind of went, it might be on the back of what goaltender goes, this ain't happening. And obviously, Hellbuck would be the guy I would pick to do that over. It's no offense to Riddish. I think he's actually a solid overall goaltender. It's just Connor Hellbuck is one of the best goalies in the league. So you're going to pick him in that instance. That's the reason why I switched my pick to uh, the Jets. But I wouldn't be shocked at all if the Flames win. This is a coin flip series. You kind of almost have to pick it off of your gut. Thanks a lot, guys. You guys are awesome. I just I love talking with you guys and hearing what you got to say. Um, some of the best minds in hockey, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, I wanted to bring up something when you were talking about Hellebuck and best goaltenders. I always got to do this because I love him. I love him. I love him. I don't care what the year he had. I think Gibson is uh, maybe the best. Could be could be up there with the top three goaltenders in the league. So I thought I'd bring that up just because. That's a good point. A, he had a, he had a tough year, and I like to promote him a lot. So uh, talking about that, a good point. you have a podcast coming up possibly. Uh, is that right, Deli? Yeah, tomorrow we're recording uh, Totally Offsides. It's a Ducks podcast uh, started uh, by a, a woman named Chip Lehman, who's a, a huge Ducks fan, excellent hockey mind. And uh, we have a little fun on there, too. We, we talk hockey, but we also talk some pop culture, some uh, some music. It's going to be a, kind of a goal song oriented episode uh, tomorrow. So uh, tune in, probably will release tomorrow evening. Yeah, well, I can, uh, if you ever want me to, I completely forgot about that. You're right. I left out Gibson. So if you ever want me to redeem myself, I really like John Gibson. Just ask me on your podcast, Joey, and I got you. Uh, I I'll, I'll, I'll love, rep. I I'll rep. Love John Gibson. Yeah, I'll rep him. I, I wanted to promote him a bit. Yeah, I forgot. I forgot about it. I just, it's because the Ducks weren't in the playoffs. So it just went like exactly. the goalies that aren't in the contention right now kind of go out of your head. So, but you're right. He has to be top three. 
What are you going, Joe? Uh, you, you, yeah, you got so much stuff going on. It's crazy. We're, we're doing things together all over the place. Uh, we got uh, you know, Flyers Nitty Gritty is going flying right now. We got a Facebook thing going on. Uh, we have uh, Twitter. We, what's your Twitter handle and all that? Uh, at JJ Bora 26. And my last name is B-O-R-E-K because I know some people do the U. Um, and then 26. And then... Our podcast is true, T R U underscore Philly Sport for our Twitter, and then you said Flyers Nitty Gritty already, so that's about it. Other than I said Pub Sports at the beginning for baseball coverage as well, if the season continues. Yeah, and if you wonder why I didn't put any picks in here, it's because people pay me for that, and I don't feel <laughs> like I shouldn't be doing that. You can go to B Pal Picks on my Patreon, and I'll I'll have that in the comment section and everything and make a lot of money doing that. That's the reason why I make money is because you do. Uh, This has been wonderful. I love you guys. We're going to be doing another one here right away as well. Maybe looking at the Shaka situation. Am I right? Uh, So look out for that and look out for more fine programming coming from these guys and what they do and what we do together. Um, Glad to have you. Subscribe, hit the bell. Talk to you again. Lots of love to you.